Right, this is exercise 2d.1, how to find the inverse of a function. And we've already seen how to find inverses at, um, I'll do it up here, the up to primary school really. So if you had at um, primary school um, a little um, function box, and you might have said uh, times it, but times any input number you have by 2 and add 1. Um, for instance, you might have 7 going into the function, 7 times 2 is 14, add 1 is 15. Now the inverse function is what you do to 15 to go back again. And it's um, you can see straight away you're really going backwards. Um, but it's not hard to realize you have to take away the 1 and then divide by the 2. So 15 take away 1 is 14, divide by 2 is 7. So it does work, but um, it's how to do this algebraically that we're looking at today. And there's some easy examples like that one, or some quite tough examples. So a little starter, this is really, um, this is from exercise 2C on composite functions. Um, I'd suggest you have a look at this again. Um, I, I'll put up the answers in a bit. I won't show you how to do it. I'll just put up the answers. But if you can't remember how to do it, um, go back to exercise 2C and have a look. Um, here are the answers. Um, and you should be able to find them now. If you're any good at composite functions, you'll get those no problem. So um, assuming you're good at those, we'll go on to today's topic. And um, opposite functions, I've suggested, is another word here. It's not a very good word, to be honest. Um, but it is a, an alternative way of looking at it. How, what do you, how do you undo might be a better. How do you undo x squared to get back to x? And you'll probably think, oh, no, that's a square root function. Um, so this is like square root. Now, notice here I'm calling this a square root of x. So um, what I'd be looking at is if this was the function, you know, um, I've got to take whatever number I have. Um, comes in here, I'm going to square my number, x goes in x squared, and that gives me whatever number comes out at the end. Now here I'm going, I'm, I need the x, so don't be surprised I'm writing these. How, what do you do to undo a log? Well, again, if you remember, if you had y equals uh, log x, if I wanted x equals, I'd move the log on the other side. And the opposite of a log, the undoing the inverse, is e. Now it says y, so I better write e to the y equals x. But over here, I'm going to say the undo, the opposite, the inverse of log x is e to the x. Um, how do you, well, think of this. This is x plus 3, so whatever number I put in, I add 3. So the opposite of that, the inverse of that, is whatever number I put in, I take away 3. So, But notice again, I've got to write the x. It's x take away 3. This is the function, the inverse function of x plus 3. And sine x, well, you probably remember how to write the inverse of sine. There it is. And just for completeness, I'll just remind you, or perhaps for the first time we've ever shown you, um, this can be written as arc sine. Now, most of the time we don't care about this, but occasionally it might pop up, so I'll just show it there. So all of these then have their inverses as described. And then this just summarizes what I've just said. It's... Uh, Oh, one thing I will say is that this is the notation. I've not shown you this before. Um, I suppose it's a direct consequence of up here. I said the inverse of, of sine is written sine. It, it almost looks like a power. It's not a power. But it looks like a power. That's why some people say sine to the minus 1. Really, it's the f inverse here. So f inverse is the way we write the inverse function for f of x. So... Bearing that in mind, it says, this is the nice gentle one, actually. So this says f of x equals 4 minus 3x. So this is the method. You start off, you write y equals the function. You now rearrange the function to get x equals. So my first thought, actually, I don't like minus 3x. So I'm going to put the 3x over here. Add y equals 4. Now I'm going to move the y. So I'm going to get 3x equals 4 minus y. And I'm going to finish by writing x equals 4 minus y, all divided by 3. Now bear in mind, this is not how it's properly written. So my final step is to write f inverse. So I get rid of the x, and I write f inverse. And I get rid of that, that, that y even, I'm going to write 4 minus x over 3. So the examiner is expecting you to write your answer, finished answer, as an f inverse situation. Um, there it is. And... 
this then is a summary of the three-step process I want you to be using. Step one is to rewrite the function as y equals. Step two is to rearrange that um, equation to get x equals. So make x a subject. And then finally, step three, replace the x with f inverse and replace the y with the x. It's important that you do that final step. Some people forget it and lose a mark. So here's another one. Um, let's just go through this. Um, if I could find my pen, it would be a bonus. There it is. Um, so again, start off on the right. Y equals 3 over X minus 1. Now I've said to you that we make X the subject. Now the easiest way to make X the subject here is to move the X minus 1, all of it, over here. So I write that as Y times by the X minus 1 equals the 3. Um, I don't, I just want the x. So so again, I could multiply out the brackets. That would work. Or I personally have to go and choose to do this. I'm going to make it three over y. Um, and yeah, I'll move it up here. I think I need the room. So um, move the one on the other side. I get x equals three over y plus the one, and therefore x. Oh, well, um, I suppose this is basically the same then. F inverse of x equals 3. Notice I'm changing the x to this, changing the y to this. But what I was going to do then, actually, is just highlight the fact this can be written a second way. So if I put it all over x, um, 1 isn't over x. I need a times that by x. So I get 3 plus x over x. And that's my second way. Both of those ways are fine. Um, ah, this this highlights why I've got this thing here. Um, I forgot to mention this. It says x is not equal to 1. The only reason that, because if, if x is equal to 1, then 1 minus 1 would be 0. And of course, 3 divided by 0, if you do it in the calculator, is not allowed. It's undefined. So that's the only reason that's there. It says, be careful, you not allowed to have x equals 1. But who cares? Notice I didn't use it at all in my answer. I completely ignored that. Um, and that's what I'd recommend you do. So there's my two solutions. So and uh, my re rearrangement process is explained to you there as well. So I've got four examples. I'd probably recommend you pause this. Uh, I'm going to do them, but so pause now and then come back to them and see if you've got the answers right. So this first one, I'm going to write y equals five x minus four. Step one done. Rearrange. Well, I'll, get, I'll get y plus the four equals five x. And therefore, presumably, x is y plus 4 over 5. Now, notice that, please, that um, I'm, I'm going to stop there. But down here, the answers write it properly. And, of course, we want all our answers to say f inverse of x equals something or other. And I would write x plus 4 over 5. So this next one, this is y equals 1 over x. All right. Now, these actually just switch around. This gives me x equals 1 over y. And I'm going to stop there, but you can see that's actually, well, once I change that back to an x, you can see it's the same function. And we actually call this a self-inverse function. So um, it's a special case. And you'll see when you write it properly as f inverse, you get 1 over x rather than 1 over y. And therefore, it's the same as you started with. This one, what's this? Become y equals 2 over x plus 5. Um, Again, this is like the example we had just now. It's x plus 5. These two effectively switch places. Like we just did. Um, oh, and move the 5 onto the other side. x equals 2 over y minus 5. Um, and of course, I could just rearrange that so I get it all over the same thing. A bit like I did before. Now, um, 5 would need to be changed to 5y. When, so when I divide it by y, it's still that. So I'm going to write 2 minus 5y over y. Slightly different from before, but it's the same principle. And what's this last one do? Uh, this is y equals 2 minus root x. So that sounds to me like I'm going to need to make that root x. If I switch those two round, root x equals 2 minus y. And therefore, x equals 2 minus y all squared. 
That seems reasonable to me. Now, of course, the final line should say f inverse x equals, and so my answers should have lots of x's, and yes, they do. So all my answers here are exactly the same. This one I was a bit lazy, I only did once. Um, here I've got two answers, both of which are fine. Um, but notice I am replacing the y's with the x's, and all of these should say at the front of them. So this one should say f inverse x equals x plus 4 over 5, and all of them should say that. So hopefully you've got those. Two tricky ones to finish with. Now, these are tricky simply because um, x appears twice. And where x appears twice, we've got a bit more work to do. So I'm going to start over here. I'm going to start with y equals 1 plus x over 3 minus x. And these come up so often that it's worth knowing these tricks. I'm going to get rid of the fraction. I never like fractions, so... Um, let's write it here. I haven't got much room. Y lots of 3 minus x equals the 1 plus x. And um, I don't like brackets, so I'm going to multiply that out. 3y minus xy equals 1 plus x. And the other thing I don't particularly like is the fact that x is on both sides. So um, I want to get rid of that. I'm going to write um, x... Sorry, on the left-hand side, 3y minus the 1. So I'm going to move that over there. I think I'm going to move that that way. Equals what I've got. I've got an x there already, and I've got a plus an xy. And the reason I do this is I take out an x as a common factor on the right-hand side. I get 1 plus y in the bracket. And getting close now to a solution... Um, I can now move that bracket onto the other side. So 3y minus 1 divided by the 1 plus y equals x. And of course I rewrite this as f inverse x. That's the this side done and equals 3x minus 1 over 1 plus x. That's the answer. Notice the complication there was the fact that x appeared twice and you have to make x appear once by factorising. Um, this second example has got the same problem. We've got x's appearing twice. So you may recall a method for reducing that to only having an x appear once in the expression. And the method's called completing the square. If you remember, you half the 6, I'm going to write x plus 3, all squared. And then I take away the square of the 3, which is 9. Don't forget the 2. So this is y equals x plus 3 all squared minus 11. Um, now, remember this, I, I, all I've managed to do so far is get to a point where I've got x appearing only the once. And I want x to appear once so I can make x the subject. So I need to move everything away from it. So I shall write y plus 11 equals x plus 3 all squared. Oh, come up here. Um, so I've got a square, I've got a square root of then. So x plus 3 is equal to, well, I suppose technically it could be plus or minus the square root. There, that's a, an issue in itself, but um, I probably don't care about it here. It may well get away with this by saying that x is a positive number or something like that, where x is bigger than 3. Um, or more than minus 3 or whatever it is, but they may well restrict the domain to avoid this problem. Um, so I'm, I'm going to ignore the plus or minus for now. I'm just going to say x plus 3. I've got, so oh, what am I doing? Oh, no, I'm talking rubbish here. So um, x plus 3 equals the square root of that side. So it's the square root of the y plus 11. Nearly made a bad error. So x equals, I'm going to say the square root of y plus 11. Take away the 3. Let's see what I've got here. Um, I can just about make that out. I can just about make that out. But notice again on this last one, this is what I forgot to do. I forgot to say f inverse. f inverse is the square root of x plus 11. All square rooted minus 3. Now, this is an important last step. Let's say if you don't write that, you'll lose a mark. And um, that was an annoying last mark to lose. Notice the three-step process there, and always the same. Rewrite the function as y equals, rearrange to get x equals, and then rewrite. 
Now you're going to do some questions on this. You know, you're not going to do it all. There is a second part to this um, exercise, exercise 2D.2, um, that I'm going to go through as a video to show you the graphs. But uh, you can get started. Any graph problems, don't worry about.